What's up guys and welcome to thehextech.com. Today's tutorial is a first in a series for getting started using a Linux operating system. Linux is a free open source operating system and if used properly has many advantages over your quote unquote normal operating systems. Without further ado, let's get started. First, you will need a USB flash drive with at least 25GB of storage. Something very important to note is that all files currently on the flash drive will be deleted, so back them up if you need to. I am currently using a SanDisk 64GB to ensure that I have plenty of space, but like I said, if you look on the Ubuntu website, it specifically says you only need at least 25GB. Now let's open up our internet browser. You're going to go ahead and go to the Ubuntu website. If you type in Ubuntu download on Google, it'll take you straight to the link to download it. The version we will be downloading is Ubuntu 18.04.3 LTS, also known as the Ubuntu desktop. Listed below it are the recommended system requirements. I strongly advise you to have at least these, make sure your system meets at least these requirements in order for it to run smoothly. So we're going to go ahead and click download. It'll pop up, you can hit save. For the sake of time for this video, I already downloaded it, so we are going to move on. Um, while yours is downloading, just go ahead and pause the video, and as soon as it's done, you can go ahead and resume. As you can see right here, here's the file. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to download another software first in order to create a bootable USB drive. And the software we will be using is Rufus, so you can go ahead and type in Rufus USB. And then it will take us right to the website. Here's an example of what the software will look like on your computer. And you can go down and then you can download Rufus 3.8. I also downloaded this for the sake of time for the video, so you can press pause again while it's downloading, and once it's done downloading, you can go ahead and resume the video. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to open Rufus. We are going to take our flash drive and plug it into our computer. And then as long as you don't have multiple flash drives plugged in, it will pop up. Mine says no label, disk one, 64 gigabytes. Now the boot selection right here, we want to make it a disk or ISO image. And then it should say, you know, this stuff right here, partition scheme, target system. There's some advanced drive properties, but we don't have to mess with any of that. Got some more stuff down here, but none of that really matters yet. So we're going to go ahead and hit select. We are going to find the um, Ubuntu file that we downloaded. Hit open. Now this stuff will pop up down here. Volume label, it should be the same file that you clicked up here for your file, for your Ubuntu file. Now the target system should be this right here. I don't know if there's any other options and maybe any other versions of this, but just make sure it says that. And then this you can keep as MBR. And then make sure all this stuff is the same. Now we go ahead and press start. Okay, so something very important here is you have to hit write in DD image mode. I've tried it in both modes to see the difference because if you notice it says Right in ISO, image mode, recommended. This did not work for me, it didn't work the same, I'm not sure why, but just make sure you click right in DD image mode. So we're gonna hit OK, and it's gonna say warning, all data on device will be destroyed. So continue with this operation, click OK. I just wanna note, again, just to be extra safe, all your files on the USB drive will be deleted, so make sure you back them up if you need them. Gonna go ahead and hit OK. And you're going to see it's going to be deleting the partitions because I just recently used this to put another distribution of Linux on another computer, so it's already got something on there right now. So it's deleting partitions, and then you're going to see this little status bar go across. Um, and for the sake of this video, 
this isn't done yet, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'm going to pick it back up once it's complete. Alright, now we're back and as you can see it says ready. The big green status bar went all the way across the screen. And so now we are done with this. So basically now our USB drive that we plugged into the computer has Ubuntu downloaded on it and it's formatted properly so that way it is a you know bootable hard drive. So the next step, um, I'm going to go to a different view so that way you can see my computer. I'm going to run you through it what happens. Basically you want to restart your computer or shut it down and I'll cover that when I get there. As you can tell, I switched to an external recording device since I cannot record my screen while we are writing Ubuntu to our hard drive. The install is fairly simple, so I sped the video up in order to save time. Also, I cut a few bits out that include my personal information, but the steps are pretty self-explanatory. We begin with the computer turned off. Make sure your USB with Ubuntu is plugged into the computer. Immediately upon starting the computer, bring up your system boot manager. I am using an HP laptop, so mine is F9. As you can tell, it'll say boot options, it'll say please select, and we're going to choose USB hard drive. Um, mine is the SanDisk Cruiser 64 gigabyte. Alright, now it brings us to the welcome screen. On the left side of the screen, go ahead and choose your language. And then in the middle, we are going to see two options. One of them is try Ubuntu, and the next one is install Ubuntu. Um, if you're unsure about installing Ubuntu to your hard drive, I highly recommend clicking the try Ubuntu option. This will allow you to boot up the operating system right from the USB drive and give you a chance to play around with it before you decide to actually install it to your hard drive and partition your hard drive. It's a lot easier now to back out of installing it to your hard drive than it is to try to repartition and delete partitions later on if you decide you don't want to use Ubuntu. Go ahead and choose your keyboard layout. And then go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi. Alright, after you're connected to your Wi-Fi, we're going to go to the updates and other software page. Um, for this, we're, I chose to do a normal installation. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. The main difference is with a normal installation, it will install pretty much all the contents of Ubuntu, um, as you can see listed below. Whereas if you were to choose a minimal installation, it'll just choose your web browser, or it'll just install your web browser and basic utilities. So I went ahead and I clicked normal installation so that way it installed everything. I was in no rush at all for time. And then for the other options, I also hit download updates while installing Ubuntu. Um, basically, it's very important that whenever you're using you know, Ubuntu or any software, you know, to make sure it's updated to the most current version. So I really didn't see the need in not choosing that and then going back later and updating it later on. Then go ahead and click continue. All right, now we have to choose the installation type. Um, for this tutorial, I chose install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10. Basically, this will allow us to partition our hard drive so that way we can have Windows 10 on it and Ubuntu. And every time we start up our computer, we will be able to choose which operating system we want to boot with. Um, this is very nice because no matter which operating system you boot from, that operating system while you're using it will have the capability to use your computer and all of its resources to their fullest potential. Um, if you were to click option two, which is erase disk and install Ubuntu, this will wipe out everything on your computer and make it so that your operating system for that computer is Ubuntu. So after saying that, it's important to note, if you have any important files on your computer, do not click option two. You will lose all of your programs.
Now we are on the partition page. It says install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10. You want to make sure for the select drive that your um, the correct hard drive is chosen. Um, if you only have one hard drive in your computer, you know, it should automatically be that. But if you have like, you know, a solid state boot drive and then like a hard drive for storage, you know, you want to make sure you have the correct hard drive or solid state drive chosen so that way you're booting from the right place. And it says allocate drive space by dragging the divider below. I just went ahead and drag it right to the middle. And then I hit install now. All right, now this will pop up. Write previous changes to disk and continue. Um, it's basically telling you, you cannot undo this option. Um, so like I said before, if you, you know, don't, you know, go ahead unless you're sure that, you know, you're doing the right things because writing an operating system to your hard drive is not something that's easily reversed. Yes, it can be done, but you have to go through, you have to delete partitions, you have to reset up everything, and it's just easier to make sure that you're doing what you want right from the beginning. Then it's going to pop up again, basically saying, did you partition your hard drive how you wanted it to be um, partitioned? And then you're going to hit continue. And then it's going to start installing. I went ahead and chopped out um, quite a few minutes of time. So that way, you know, you're not sitting here um, watching all of that while yours is running. So you're probably going to want to go ahead and pause the video um, until you get to this point. Then it's going to say installation complete. And um, it's going to say that the computer needs to restart, restart in order to finish the new installation. So then this screen pops up and it's going to tell you, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. So in other words, remove your USB drive. Now we're going to go ahead and test it. Like I said, when the computer starts all the time now, you'll be able to choose. Um, as you can see at the top there, we have Ubuntu, and at the bottom we have Windows 10. So this is a good sign. This means that everything was installed properly. We're gonna choose Ubuntu, go ahead and boot it up, just to make sure that everything is running and functioning properly. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward just a little bit in my video. It's kind of ironic, I'm recording a video with a video recording device right now. Um, so, as you can see, Ubuntu is pulled up. Um, there's a couple things that will pop up, what's new in Ubuntu, um, some you know, possible apps you can install pop up, um, but it is working for me on mine. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward just a little bit more so that way we can make this video short and sweet. Um, and then right now I open the terminal because basically all I'm going to do is type in INIT space zero. And if you did not know, that is a Linux command for basically to shut down your your system immediately. I'm going to go ahead and restart the system now. And this time I'm going to choose Windows 10. And then now since we partitioned the hard drive for Ubuntu and Windows 10, your files that were on the hard drive originally for Windows 10 should be there. For example, I actually just went out and bought this computer like a couple hours ago so that way I can make this tutorial for you guys. So the username that was on this computer when I bought it was laptop. Um, but you should, you should see your normal username and everything and um, everything should be good. Your password should be good. Um, for me, I did not lose, you know, I didn't really put a lot of files on there, 
you know, before I made the tutorial, literally all I did was you can see this little untitled picture that's literally just this background that I wanted to make it. Um, so I didn't lose the files that I had put on Windows before making the tutorial, but just to be extra safe, you know, please make sure that you back up all your files because you never know what can happen, especially when you're using a Linux operating system and a command line. It's very easy to make a mistake that could pot potentially be detrimental to either the system or your files. So you want to make sure that you're backing your stuff up properly, especially if you're new. So that is it for this tutorial. Um, I hope it worked out well for you. If you have any questions or concerns, if something didn't work out, go ahead and leave a comment and I will try to reply to it as fast as possible. Um, thanks.